Hi, I'm Craig. I help run the Theta360.guide, the independent developer community for the Rico Theta. You know, I'm also in the closed beta program to develop the Theta plugins. And this is some really great technology to run applications directly inside of the camera. If you run the application inside the camera, you may in some cases be able to eliminate the use of a mobile phone, a laptop, or a desktop computer for your application. It's just a lot more flexible and you get a little bit more features than you would with normal development because the application is running directly inside of the camera. Things like dual fisheye images or dual fisheye movies. Um, you know, Rico has already developed a number of plugins that they've produced and are, you, you can get it right now, remote playback or USB data transfer. It shows off some of the features of the camera and the plugin, but now you can get involved yourself. You will need to get an unlocked camera. This is a normal Ricoh Theta camera, but it's been unlocked. By that, I mean you can put the camera into developer mode. Application development is done with Android Studio. The camera does have an Android operating system inside of it. So you'll, you'll need to plug in the USB cable directly into your computer. At that point, it's normal Android development. The camera, of course, has no screen, um, so you'll need to work around that. We'll show you how to work on the LEDs to get uh, button presses working. And I'll overview, give you an overview of the API documentation as well as the SDK that comes with this early access beta development. Uh, stay tuned and I'll give you a quick overview. The Rico Theta plugin does come with a fairly extensive set of documentation on the API, the camera, and how to build the plugin. So it's a pretty good time to get started right now. It identifies the different components of the camera. Uh, you can remap the buttons, the, uh, the Wi-Fi button and the mode button to your individual application. You can also turn on and off the LEDs as well as change the color of the LEDs. Some of the LEDs are enabled with white, blue, green, and red coloring. So some of my uh, previous uh, tutorials, I um, did show how to let's play around the buttons and change color. It's, it's a fun way to get started to get to know the SDK. It also shows you how to get the camera into plugin mode. There's a way to select different plugins. You can set a default plugin and then when you press the mode button, it's the lower one on the side of the camera, for two seconds, the camera will then move into plug-in mode and you can use your plugin. So if you are configuring your plugin for your client, you can make sure that your plugin is the active plugin. And then when you just give them the camera, it'll press and hold the mode button for two seconds and it'll just start running your own application. Programmatically, I'll show you how to start your plugin and then uh, move from the plugin back into the normal camera mode. The camera does run an, uh, its own web server inside of the camera, so your plugin can access the, the web server and, and run the, the OSC or the Wi Fi API of the camera. Also, there's a since the web server running inside the camera, you could hook into that to use as configuration for your own plugin. The plugin does use the normal Android camera API, and you can take the picture that way. However, if it's easier for you, you could also access the, the Wi-Fi API or the web API of the camera using the open spherical camera uh, specification. So there's two ways, right? One is you're just using the Android camera API to take a picture as if it was a mobile phone. Uh, the second way is your plugin can actually send out a post rest command or post HTTP command to this web server that's running on the camera. And so both the, the plugin and the camera are running both within the camera, and then it can take a picture or manipulate the settings of the camera that way. Uh, this section covers the button presses. The button presses are mapped to normal keys in Android. 
that you can see right here, there's just a key code specification. So you can look for the button press event. You can also control the LEDs, which is kind of cool. Um, there is a bunch of colors. Not all the LEDs have all the colors. So um, like, I don't think I've gotten this magenta run working, but I guess I could try it right now. As the camera doesn't have a screen, you're gonna to have to communicate with your user through sound or blinking LEDs. Based on how fast you blink the LED, you can have it mean a certain thing. For example, a very quick blinking might mean that the picture is about to be taking place or something's happening to your video. You can also turn off the LEDs. The camera can make sound. So you can control the, the speakers of the camera with your, your plugin. The camera also has wireless access. There's um, client mode and normal AP access mode. There's a sample code, which I'll give you an overview of. And there's a bunch of specifications, which is rather cool, right? So you could, you can start seeing that there's a fair bit of control that you have. Like you don't have this uh, dual fisheye recording in 4K mode uh, from the normal API. So that, that could be quite interesting. There's also the stitching section. So dual fisheye image, this was not possible before. A static stitching, dynamic stitching. The exposure mode, you had access to it, most of it from the, the Wi-Fi API. But this is showing that you can use the Android API to access these specifications as well. Pretty cool. So you could really tune the, the camera for your specific application. It's all available to you. So another pretty cool API here is the microphone selection. Microphone gain. In addition to the API documentation, you also have a SDK that comes with the camera. Um, it has a fairly good readme. explains the different components, what the requirements are for setting up the SDK. Uh, it runs on both Windows 10 and Mac. If you're doing Android development, uh, it's likely maybe Mac, uh, Windows would be more popular. Uh, the minimum requirement is just a normal Android SDK here. Okay. When you import the SDK into um, Android Studio, you can now directly access the program. And there's examples here of how to run the, run the sample code. There's also fairly extensive documentation from the community. It covers setting up your environment, how to install Android Studio, getting everything set up properly, connecting your camera to your computer, just running through some basic ADB commands to make sure that everything's working properly, everything's set up. It's a full Android OS inside of the camera, so it's gonna look pretty familiar if you're used to using Android. It also covers an interesting tool here called Visor. And with Visor, you can display a virtual screen from the camera to your uh, desktop computer. So in this picture here, I'm using visor on the, on, on the camera and it's displaying to my Windows desktop here. So I can click within visor, uh, which is application that runs on the Windows desktop, I can click on all these logos and it actually corresponds to the, uh, the icons on the running inside the camera. Although 
the camera, of course, has no screen. It shows you how to use the different plugins, testing it out, building uh, different type of features, how to switch the plugin. You can select the one. So this is the one I built here. Covers custom development. Additional concept ideas. and how to take part in the community. So if you're interested in joining us, uh, helping out with the development, just getting started, it could be great for your business, then please contact us. So there's contact information in the link below. Just uh, send us an email and we'll see what we can do about helping you to unlock the camera. Thank you.